Here's everything Marvel revealed on Disney Plus Day. After two whole years of making us stay up to the wee hours of the morning to comb through their shows for Easter eggs and hidden details, Disney Plus decided not to pack it in. Rather, they're continuing this mad experiment for yet another year. On Friday, the House of Mouse celebrated the second year of its streaming service with a day full of announcements, including a metric ton of shows coming to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. With first looks at titles like Moon Knight and She-Hulk, updated release date information, and some seriously unexpected reveals, it was a lot to take in for Marvel fans, especially compared to the relatively sparse offerings that Star Wars fans got in comparison. Now we're gonna break down everything that Marvel revealed on Disney Plus Day in just a moment, but with that said, if you prefer to read all about it, Ty Gooden has you covered over on Nerdist.com. Otherwise, kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. Uh, no, wait, 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 wait. We're out of regular arrows. What do you mean we're out? Oh my God, trick arrows? Let's start things off with one of the most surprising reveals, and that is X-Men 97. Arriving on Disney Plus in 2023, X-Men 97 is a direct continuation of 1992's iconic X-Men The Animated Series, which to this day might have the greatest opening theme of any animated series ever. Ever! Following the announcement, Marvel Studios head of streaming TV and animation Brad Winderbaum and VP of animation Dana Vasquez Eberhardt appeared on the This Week in Marvel podcast, where they revealed new information about the cast and crew. Returning from the original series are Cal Dodd, Lenore Zan, George Buza, Allison Seeley Smith, Chris Potter, Catherine Disher, Adrian Huff, and Christopher Britton. Now, according to Marvel, some cast members of X-Men 97 will reprise their original roles, while others are voicing entirely brand new parts. New cast members include Jennifer Hale, Aniwa Buachi, Ray Chase, Matthew Watterson, J.P. Karliak, Holly Chu, Jeff Bennett, and A.J. Lacasio. The series will be showrun and executive produced by Bo DeMeo, with Jay Castorena serving as supervising director and Charlie Feldman serving as supervising producer. And original X-Men the Animated Series showrunners Eric and Julia Lawal and series director Larry Houston are going to be consulting on this project as well. As for our resident expert Eric Diaz, he put together a list of seven things that we want to see from the new X-Men 97 series, which you can read now on Nerdist.com. But be sure to let us know what you'd like to see from this show in the comments below. Moving on, we come to Moon Knight, which stars Oscar Isaac as Mark Spector, a man who struggles with demons in every sense of the word, including one lurking in the background in this teaser. A mercenary with dissociative identity disorder, Mark Spector is the chosen avatar of the Egyptian god Khonshu to fight as the vigilante Moon Knight. Dropping in 2022, the series looks like it could be one of the MCU's darkest and most surprising entries yet. And yes, there is a good explanation for Oscar Isaac's weird voice that he's using. It's one of his alternate personas. We'll have a bigger breakdown of everything you might have missed in the trailer later this week. But if you want to know more about Moon Knight's comic book history right now, check out my old episode of Explainiac, which I will link to in the comments below. Moving on, we have She-Hulk, which stars black orphan standout Tatiana Maslany as Jennifer Walters, the cousin of Bruce Banner, an ace attorney, and someone who also has a tendency to turn green when she's angry. The first look teased this legal dramedy's dueling worlds of Jennifer Walters' attorney at law and her green mean alter ego. With guest appearances by Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner, both in his human form and Professor Hulk form, a killer homage to the 1970s Incredible Hulk TV show, and a title treatment that evokes legal dramas of yesteryear in the best way possible, this show could be the best new addition to the MCU when it drops in 2022. After that, we got our first look at Ms. Marvel. Before she appears alongside her idol Carol Danvers in The Marvels, Kamala Khan will get her own series first. Starring newcomer Iman Vellani, it looks like it's going to do for the MCU what Shazam did for the DCEU. Now, this coming-of-age story set in Jersey City will find Kamala coming into her own as a superhero complete with a homemade costume. Whether or not they'll keep her Inhumans connected Terrigen Bomb origin remains to be seen, but one scene in the teaser certainly hints at that. Regardless, Kamala will embiggen the MCU sometime in 2022. The Disney Plus Day presentation then teased another title treatment for I Am Groot, a series of original shorts starring the cutest member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. This is the third upcoming Guardians-focused entry coming to the MCU, alongside Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, which is bound to be the Life Day miracle that keeps on giving whenever it finally comes out. And while the creators of What If teased their plans for season two long before Disney Plus Day, the second season of Marvel's inaugural animated anthology series was officially confirmed during this presentation. Speaking with io9 earlier this year, executive producer Brad Winderbaum confirmed that Captain Carter's story will continue in season two and serve as our main narrative connective tissue. Considering that season one brought together the Guardians of the Multiverse and caused the Watcher to become the doer, fingers crossed they go even bigger and bolder in season two. 
After that, we got a title for Echo, which will spin off from the events of Hawkeye, the Clint Barton and Kate Bishop starring adventure premiering on Disney Plus on November 24th. Now, Variety first reported on the Alakwa Cox starring spin-off series back in March, but that gives us high hopes for her role in Hawkeye. Also known as Maya Lopez, Echo is a deaf Native American vigilante who, much like Taskmaster, possesses photographic reflexes. Essentially, whatever physical movement she sees, she can perfectly recreate, even if she's only seen it once. A former assassin for Kingpin, a love interest of Daredevil and Moon Knight, Echo has fought alongside the Avengers, adopted the Ronin identity for a time, and even helped fight the Skrulls during Secret Invasion, so in other words, she's shaping up to be pretty important for Marvel's Phase 4 and beyond. Speaking of Marvel's Phase 4, the MCU has us counting down the missed minutes until Loki Season 2 premieres. Hey After the time-hopping multiversal mayhem of Season 1, Loki Season 2 is going to kick our Kang watch into overdrive as we look to see how Loki picks up the pieces in the wake of He Who Remains' unexpected death. One thing, though, is for certain, if Mobius doesn't get to ride his jet ski in Season 2, we riot. It'll be fun, though. Yeah, it'll be really fun. Now, in addition to X-Men 97, Marvel announced another brand new animated series coming to the MCU, Spider-Man Freshman Year. While Tom Holland will likely perpetually look as though he's 19 years old, this series will take us back to Peter Parker's high school years without risking looking like 21 Jump Street. Speaking of youthful Marvel heroes, though, Ironheart also received a new logo, making it feel less connected to Iron Man's signature font and more like something of Riri Williams' own making. Now, for those who don't know, Ironheart stars Dominique Thorne as Riri Williams, the young woman that creates the most advanced suit of armor since Iron Man did way back when. Now, the real question, though, is will Robert Downey Jr. voice the Tony Stark AI in Riri's suit like in the comics? Oh, I'm not here. After that, we come to the no longer rumored Agatha Harkness spinoff series. Titled Agatha House of Harkness, the show will follow the misadventures of everybody's favorite nosy neighbor turned sinister spellcaster Agatha Harkness. And when we last left her on WandaVision, Wanda Maximoff cast a spell on Agatha to trap her in her Agnes identity, leaving her in Westview, New Jersey. However, it's only a matter of time until Agnes wanders into Agatha's magical murder basement and figures out exactly what's what. I'll be seeing you, Agnes. Not if I see you first, hon. As for what we can expect from the series, well, boy howdy, do I have an episode of Nerdist News just for you. Next up, we have Armor Wars, which stars Don Cheadle as James Rhodes in a riff on the iconic comic book story of the same name about Stark technology being misused, which, when is it not being misused? Let's be real for a second. Now, current rumors suggest we could also see the return of Sam Rockwell's Justin Hammer in this series, but also expect some crossover between this and Ironheart whenever they finally debut. And following the success of the Marvel Zombie-centric episode of What If, Marvel Studios is transforming this fan-favorite Marvel comic story into a full-fledged series of its own. According to the series logline, the animated series from Marvel Studios reimagines the Marvel Universe as a new generation of heroes battle against an ever-spreading zombie scourge. And considering the Marvel Zombies eventually gain the power to travel beyond their home world, it's a perfect spin-off for Marvel's increasingly multiversal storytelling model. And last but not least, we got a brand new logo for Secret Invasion and a first look at an eye-patchless Nick Fury in this scroll-filled series. The logo morphed from its previously released red text into a purple and green version that perfectly evokes the shape-shifting aliens at the heart of its story, the Skrulls. Traditionally villains in the Marvel Universe, the Skrulls appeared as refugees from Kree persecution and erstwhile allies in the 90s set Captain Marvel. And as we learned in Spider-Man Far From Home and in WandaVision, Skrull agents have remained on Earth working in concert with Nick Fury, who we last saw enjoying a well-deserved vacation somewhere in space. You got my shoes! Now Samuel L. Jackson is back as Nick Fury, and he looks decidedly more grizzled this time around. With his flirk and scratched eye no longer hiding behind an eye patch, Nick Fury looks like he means business. Now, alongside Ben Mendelsohn as the Skrull Talos and Game of Thrones star Amelia Clark in a mystery role, Nick Fury is going to have his hands full in this series all about Skrull sleeper cells infiltrating the Earth. And there you have it, folks. That is everything Marvel announced during Disney Plus Day. Suffice to say, it's a lot of content coming our way in the months ahead. And that's to say nothing of all the non-MCU stuff they announced as well. We'll keep you up to date on all the important nerdy things coming your way, and you better believe we're going to overanalyze every single second of Marvel footage in that teaser trailer. For now, though, tell us, what did you think of the Disney Plus Day announcements? Which of these shows are you most excited about, and why? You're in for one hell of a ride. Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.